Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology Podcasts with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used, or just around the corner, from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Coming to Dallas, Texas, September 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2018, the Blockchain and Future Tech Expo. This is going to be a gigantic conference of over 5,000 people. We're going to be talking about blockchain and its applications. We're going to be talking about quantum computing, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and several other future technologies that are poised to and actually changing our lives as we speak. Here's why you should attend. As you may know, early adopters are the ones that investigated and profited from things like the gold rush in the 1800s, from the dot-com boom in the 1990s, from the internet boom in 2005, from the smartphone explosion in 2007, from the real estate boom that ended in 2008, and of course, from the Bitcoin boom that started in 2012. Early adopters act now. They don't wait till later. They go out west first, in their covered wagons, they find the biggest gold nuggets. If you consider yourself an early adopter and you want to find the biggest nuggets, then you owe it to yourself to attend this upcoming conference. Blockchain is going to affect how we control and store our medical data, how we send money around the world, how we bank, and more. But artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and cybersecurity will play a pivotal role in our lives as well. And that's why our next event, September 14th to the 16th at the Dallas Convention Center, is going to have not only 5,000 plus attendees, but we'll showcase blockchain, AI, cybersecurity, quantum computing, and more. You want to get in on the coming gold rush of future tech and opportunity as an early adopter. Don't be left out. To register, go to bftexpo.com. That's blockchainfuturetechexpo.com. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to the Future Tech Podcast. I am Alan Thomas, and today we have... Gabrielle Giancola, co-founder and CEO of Kiwi. How are you doing, Gabrielle? I'm doing great. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the, to the talk. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, we're glad to have you here. Uh, so we'll just jump right into it. Uh, tell us all about Kiwi. Tell us about the company. What do you guys do? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, what we what we do in a, in a nutshell or what we believe in is, is loyalty. So what we're doing is we're helping brands to run their loyalty programs on the blockchain. And by that, we really give the, their customers, their loyal customers, the freedom they deserve. And uh, the goal, the ultimate goal is to bring the whole loyalty market um, on the blockchain. And that works that works really by um, by the brands using our our platform, um, uh, which which is, uh, in a nutshell, an API, which they can use to um, uh, tokenize and de- decentralize their own loyalty program. Uh, the integration is for them like a plug and play solution, so it is really easy and uh, and affordable for them to integrate. And on the other side, they really give their customers the possibility to have the freedom they reserve by exchanging all the points that you now have in different apps and that you can't exchange um, for, for, for each other. And that is really one of the coolest features of, of what we're giving to to customer because right now. Um, you may know it. You fly, you fly with an airline. You go to a hotel. You maybe buy something um, for groceries, and you get all those different kind of points. But you don't know really what to do with them. And then you get so many rules attached to them. Them, so you can't use them for another brand, or you can. You have to use them in just 12 months. So we really want to try to solve that problem because we see it as one of the core problems of the whole loyalty market. So in in the loyalty programs that that you guys run or are involved with, it's more it's more free flowing with the points in terms of how you can use them and and the the, the time constraints on them. Yeah, right. You, you have to imagine it like that. You you have um, the ultimate goal is that you have all those loyalty programs that you use right now. Um, you you get rewarded from those different companies, and you use the Kiwi Wallet to have an overview of all the we call it loyalty tokens. Um, that you have earned in, in the ecosystem, okay? And you have to imagine that you can really exchange the, let's take uh, you fly with an airline, so you get your airline token, and now you exchange it for the coffee token. 
So you flew Delta, you get your Delta coins, and now you exchange the Delta coins for the Starbucks coins, okay? And with that, you get your coffee. So the whole idea behind it is, until now, you are, you're stuck in, in two different loyalty programs, and the only way you can reuse the, the Delta coin is by flying, and on the other side, is, it is by, by, by getting a coffee at Starbucks with, with the Starbucks coin. And <clears throat> that is, that is one, of the, one of the main features of, of the wallet for the customers. And of course, you can exchange those loyalty tokens also for the Kiwi token, which is the main and underlying currency of all those tokens. And that one is or will be um, uh, also at exchanges or exchangeable. And so you can um, uh, get crypto or fiat for, for, that, for your token. So it's a completely different experience for the users um, that, 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 he has, that he has now. Okay, so that's very cool then if you can kind of cross between entities, cross Completely, between companies yeah. with your with your coins. And, and what uh, what brought Kiwi about? What, what how did it how did the company come about? So we we started with Kiwi in 2015 um, with uh, with uh, actually with an off chain loyalty application, so it wasn't uh, on the blockchain. And there the goal was to um, to have one app where you have different brands on on, on there on, on it, and uh, you get the same point from all those brands, and you can actually then redeem for redeem those points for different products for also different merchants. And what we saw is that we had we had a huge traction here in Switzerland. We uh, had around 100,000 users on the app and work with uh, 900 local brands and also international brands like Subway and Burger King here in Switzerland. And so we learned a lot about the loyalty market, and we saw that. On, on the one side, we generated a lot of data with that app, and so we we, we started to think about how can you can you increase the security for that data, and so we also look look deeper into the whole um, blockchain space and not not even the crypto space, but really the blockchain technology. We we needed to to understand better the whole technology behind it, and on the other side, in the meantime, we also had different requests from brands that asked us, "Hey guys, do you have a white label solution of your app?" And so we saw that okay, actually brands want want to have their own want to have their own thing, their own interface, and want to have their own branding on on their app, and and not selling let's let's call it selling another another application, which would have been like the Kiwi application. So that really <clears throat> was a mix of of of, of, fee, of like market feedbacks and then internal research, which brought us last year to uh, to really change the whole business model and say okay, let's go uh, a layer deeper let's build just the infrastructure for all those loyalty programs out there because we don't want to build one loyalty program more to compete with all those out there we actually just want to bring them on the same foundation so that we as customers have the freedom that we actually deserve because we are loyal to those to those companies we are paying and buying their products but the loyalty that we give that we get from them is not that high if you if you if you look at that because you get some points which don't really have a high value. It is super difficult to get something cool. And so for us, we, we see a mismatch of, let's call it loyalty, from, from one side to the other. And so let's say I control a brand and I, I, want a, uh, I want a loyalty program on the blockchain and I come to you guys. What does the, the starting process look like? Is there is it start with a, 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 some kind of evaluation or a consult or something? How does it start? Yeah, right now. So right now we have uh, we have really different a lot of brands asking us um, how um, how they can start integrating their own loyalty programs on on top of our technology, and um, the process is is um, is pretty simple. What we do is uh, we do a, let's call it the first workshop with with that brand um, where we can see okay what is actually the goal of of that brand, um, what they want, what do they want to do, and how can we help them um, let's say solve or reach their goals. After that, let's call it more a business kind of workshop, you have a technical workshop where our developers get together with the um, developers of, of, of that brand, which need to integrate or work with the API that we um, deliver to them. And, um, and after that, the integration, if you already have a loyalty program, the integration of our API is super fast. So we had now a case, um, uh, it, it's, a Swiss, it's a Swiss brand, La Tesso, um, which uh, actually started the rollout um, of the rewarding program in seven countries yesterday, um, which is like all built on our technology. And with the time they took, their developers took for integrating our API was, I think, two days. 
So for them, it was really super fast because if they would have built um, uh, an own infrastructure and if they had to issue an own coin based on, on maybe the Ethereum blockchain or they have to go through the whole legal hassle, it's uh, six to 12 months um, uh, process. And so there, of course, for brands, it is, it is such an easy solution to get as fast as possible um, on a blockchain and really uh, use, the, use the advantages of, 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 of it. And so it's a, it's a, it sounds like it's a pretty fast process in terms of, yeah, well, you know, we're, it seems like it's much, it'd be a much easier solution to just work with you guys as opposed to, try, like you said, as opposed to trying to build all that yourself. Completely, because, and I mean, you, you don't have anything to lose because we're really giving you the, the, basic, the basics that you need to, to have an integration to the blockchain. Um, I mean, you don't have, your developers don't need to build, first, they don't need to know Solidity or any other language, programming language that you need for Ethereum. They don't need to know what, the, what is a smart contract. You know what I mean? So the whole recruiting process behind those IT teams and restructuring those IT teams is zero because your developers work with the same languages they worked the whole day. And so that's, that's the most, for us, it's also the most fascinating thing because it's super scalable. So um, uh, the, I mean, we're, the API is one thing, and now the, the next thing will really be the developer kit so that for the first customer providing, let's say, a, a personal support, we are going as business guys, as a team, our developers are coming um, uh, with, with, to meet their other tech guys. But, of course, the goal is that you have a developer kit where every developer can access. He has the API, the documentation. He has the best practices, how to use it. And, um, and then, it's, then it's really fully scalable. So it sounds like the main benefits for the brands would be the speed and customization. And then the main benefits for the users would be being able to use all of your points pretty much anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure it's like that. And so let's talk for a minute about when you were putting all of this together what are some of the difficulties you've encountered in getting to this point with Keep? So, um, I mean, there are different different challenges. One thing is for sure, um, you move from a traditional market to, to a new space, the blockchain and crypto space. So you have a, a huge impact of new information, of new know-how that you have to, that you have to, to, to suck up. And, and of course, you have a completely new culture that you have to um, understand. So, I mean that is a challenge, but also um, a privilege to to be able to uh, to get so much know-how to see so many different um, possibilities in that market. Um, a challenge for sure was the whole legal the whole legal part because uh, regulations. I mean you saw it yourself. It was it wasn't it wasn't uh, or everybody saw it. It wasn't a straight thing where we saw oh, okay regulators came into the market. They gave us some uh, some rules and now we can work. No. It's actually, it's actually the reverse. The regulators don't know yet how to regulate the market. So for a startup, it is pretty difficult to move in that section because you, you're never 100% sure is that the right move. So you, you just have some moves where you can do where you really have 100% certainty. For us, that was, for example, the, the whole tax ruling that we got from the, from the city of Zouk. So we know that the, 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 the funds of our token sale won't be taxed. Um, and, and that was a hundred percent certainty which we had. But legal is for sure something that that I can call a challenge in this space. Um, the other side is, is, I mean, that's the that's the work that is behind the startup or behind behind every project in, in mostly also in this space because it is really community driven. Um, you have to build up a community, really people and a network um, uh, surrounded of you, for, for, uh, of you that. That really can that really can provide you with not only information but they can refer you to new customers that can really bring your business um, increase the business opportunities that you have so that is for sure also something that you don't build um, from one day to another but that needs that, that needs time you have to go different conferences you have to meet a lot of people and um, so that one also was also for sure something that that takes a lot of time and uh, and and focus for, from from a project. Now, you mentioned regulation. Do you think there'll ever be a point where regulators will catch up in terms of knowledge, or at least get close, at least get close enough to be able to, I guess, create rules or regulations that are act, that actually seem like they're on point, or that they or that they're relevant to what what you're doing? Yeah, completely. Because I mean, 
like regulations is is one big chunk of a lot of details and a lot of rules that have to be defined. So it ranges from is a token a security to how do we tax a token sale. So you have a lot of a lot really a lot of different um, let's say variables in the whole legal or regulate regulations ecosystem that you have to to look at. And um, the thing is what we saw that I, I take again the example for, for of the taxes, we worked really close with uh, with the tax regulators here in uh, in the city of Zug. And that was that was really good because they we had to detail out everything what we we're doing and how we we're doing it. But then they really provided us with a template and with a, with an answer that where we know okay it is like that. And now they have like a template for every other startup that let's say does 90% what we are doing in the same structure. You know what I mean? So that is a lot of value for, for the regulators because they can work together with a startup and actually implement rules. On the other side, you have other subjects which need a lot more research, a lot more political, and also, of course, um, like business discussion um, where you can define, for example, is a token of security or not. That discussion, I think every country has that discussion going on right now. And it does, it, it's not solved from, from today to tomorrow. So I think I'm, I'm confident the regulators will come with, uh, with, with fixed rules, um, but it won't be, it won't be uh, needed that year. It will come in the next few years. And so we're, and so we're talking about some of the, the difficulties or hurdles that you've had to clear in order to get this far. What would you say are some of the main achievements that you've experienced with Kiwi up to this point? So main achievement, what, what we are really, really proud of is, uh, is that with the funds that we received in January, we, we expanded the team. So we, we, we built an amazing team where, uh, where we're all super passionate um, about the whole blockchain, uh, blockchain space and about, of course, Kiwi and the potential of Kiwi. And um, I would say what we did is really with that team is building a product. I'm, I'm super proud of, of that we can say, of, or if a, brand, if, if a brand contacts us, we can say, hey, yes, here you have the API. Because a lot of a lot of projects in the blockchain space, and that is a bit sad, have, have just a white paper or have just a cool vision how to or what to do. But I'm really really proud that we have something to show, and uh, and that we have the first customer which does the first rollout with us in, in seven countries. Um, so that is that is something that makes me super proud because I see that our vision um, really gets into the into the into reality, and then we start. Um, seeing the the first uh, how do you want to call it the first we can take the first, harvest the first fruits that we that we that we seed it so um, I'm really really proud about about mainly those those three things our team our product and and that we got that we got the first rollout out <laughs> and so how would that factor into what the roadmap for the company is for the next couple of years I mean what's what's coming behind that rollout. So after the rollout, um, uh, we will still, of course, uh, work on the product because there is uh, still a lot to do. And um, so enhance the product. And we have many, many, many brands in the pipeline. So for us, it's really all about building and growing the ecosystem. So um, acquiring brands, integrating them um, as fast as possible and, and looking that the users or the customers that are using our ecosystem are really, are really receiving the, the freedom they deserve. They deserve. So um, our goal is really completely focused, or our let's say roadmap is completely focused on on acquiring brands and on uh, increasing the product quality. Because you can never to do that. So that is really the main focus for us. And, and in terms of widespread use, do you think that will come more from just word of mouth from users engaging in word of mouth, or will it come from the brands seriously pushing? Uh, their customers toward using you know using their loyalty points yeah. in blockchain. Um, so it will be a mix, uh, but there, I, I would I assume uh, I assume that it will be 80 70 80 percent from the brands and 20 30 percent from word of mouth because brand they have their they're not pushing Kiwi so they're just using the Kiwi technology and what they're actually pushing is they're pushing their own loyalty program which is connected to our technology so they are completely um, investing in their brand. And that's, I'm seeing the, the, the value for them or the, 
the the probability they the way they will invest a lot of marketing into those programs uh, really high. And I mean, I don't see just from an assumption point of view, but I see it now with the first customer, or I see with the other customers that we're in the pipeline. They're not just planning about, hey, we're switching from normal database to blockchain um, with Kiwi, but they're really planning about how are we marketing the whole thing. Because it is a huge, a huge thing if a brand can communicate right now, hey guys, I actually changed my load program and I put it on the blockchain. Because everybody is interested to hear that. Now, as far as all the different ideas, and I'm sure you come across all the time, what's What's some developments that that maybe have been suggested or that you've heard people talk about that seem that seem like maybe it's a little too soon? Like, oh well, well this particular idea is good, but it's something that might be five years out versus next year. That's a good question. I think I think I can't I can tell you one specific idea, but what I see is that, and we hear that we hear that often from from the brands that they say, hey guys. We actually look at blockchain from many different angles, so they have different views on, on the on the technology um, for from different departments: finance, marketing, operations, and so on, supply supply chain, and so on. And they say the only thing which we can easily explain to our shareholders, to our customers, and to our executives is actually loyalty, because it is a super super let's say, easy thing to understand. So you don't have to, it is a, a real world case, which everybody knows, and you just explain to the people how you integrate blockchain technology. Now, that is something that, and there are many, many cases that, are, that, that, have, a, that have a real world application. I think those cases are mo- much more easy to, to understand and to give to a mainstream user. Instead, then if you take maybe a, a niche uh, uh, application or decentralized application where you also just have a small target group which really understands what you can do with that technology. So I think that that's the big difference. So those technologies that need much more understanding, I think will also need much more time to really get in the market because it is already difficult to understand blockchain technology. Then you need to understand a bit the whole crypto market. So if you put on top uh, a bit uh, a difficult or or complex business model, it gets much, much more difficult to um, to explain and, and to bring to the market. So I think those those projects will need more time uh, simply because you have less people that really get what you're doing. So in terms of explaining what's going on to shareholders, the big the big emphasis would have to be on the actual results, which is the loyalty, right? Yeah, in, in, in our case, in our case, what we hear is loyalty is super easy to sell because um, it is something everybody gets. All, all the share, like the most shareholders of a company, if they have a loyalty program, they use it. So they know what it is about. They can directly, they, they directly have a, have a feeling for it. If you if you tell your shareholders, hey guys, we're actually um, building our supply, we're tracking the the, the material we are buying um, on the blockchain, and we use it for that, that, and that. I don't know if your shareholders really get what you're using the blockchain for. I think that that's the main difference. Well, well maybe it's like you said, maybe it's not necessary for them to, to know all the different moving parts. Maybe they just need to know that the machine works. Completely. Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah, completely right. Completely. Because actually a customer doesn't want to know. Like we also see it. It's not that if somebody gets uh, a, a, like a loyalty program which is built on our technology, it's not written on, on the front, hey, this is on the blockchain. You know what I mean? So the customer doesn't even know he is using an application that is built on the blockchain. That is amazing. Like, yeah, like you say, he just he just, he just wants the machine to work. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so what would you say your your final thoughts would be for our listeners? What do you want them to take away from the interview about Kiwi? So what well, I mean the, I think the most important thing to 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 take to take away is that that loyalty is important not in not don't just in the ways of family friends and and maybe employees but really in in the sense of, of customers and that it is really really important that we that we bring it on the blockchain because that's that's not only how how we can have a be- better loyalty market but i think that's really one way to bring the whole blockchain and crypto space to the mainstream because um that needs to be one of the the next milestones for the whole space for for the whole community and what's the best way for our listeners to to 
get in touch with keep with you and with Kiwi and, and engage with the with the company? So you can uh, you can go on uh, on uh, www.kiwi.com, um, and if you will have all the channels, we are we are we're on Telegram. Um, we have of course the, the mail address, you know, the Facebook, Twitter account, all the accounts. We are we're reachable nearly 24 <laughs> seven, or at least we try. Oh, that's great. Well, well, I, I thank you, Gabrielle, for coming in and, like I said, sharing your 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 expertise and your time with us. Just really appreciate it. I thank I thank you very much, uh, Alan. It was it was great talking to you, and uh, and I hope you you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Coming to Dallas, Texas, September 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2018, the Blockchain and Future Tech Expo. This is going to be a gigantic conference of over 5,000 people. We're going to be talking about blockchain and its applications. We're going to be talking about quantum computing, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and several other future technologies that are poised to and actually changing our lives as we speak. Here's why you should attend. As you may know, early adopters are the ones that investigated and profited from things like the gold rush in the 1800s, from the dot-com boom in the 1990s, from the internet boom in 2005, from the smartphone explosion in 2007, from the real estate boom that ended in 2008, and of course, from the Bitcoin boom that started in 2012. Early adopters act now. They don't wait till later. They go out west first in their covered wagons. They find the biggest gold nuggets. If you consider yourself an early adopter and you want to find the biggest nuggets, then you owe it to yourself to attend this upcoming conference. Blockchain is going to affect how we control and store our medical data, how we send money around the world, how we bank, and more. But artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and cybersecurity will play a pivotal role in our lives as well. And that's why our next event, September 14th to the 16th at the Dallas Convention Center, is going to have not only 5,000 plus attendees, but we'll showcase blockchain, AI, cybersecurity, quantum computing, and more. You want to get in on the coming gold rush of future tech and opportunity as an early adopter. Don't be left out. To register, go to bftexpo.com. That's blockchainfuturetechexpo.com. Thank you. You have been listening to Almost Here. Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post to review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.